Hello everyone, John Coleman here from the TM Mortgage, and can you believe it, it's episode number 12. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to TN Mortgage, and especially in 2023, we were just talking that we started in January 2023, 12 episodes later, we haven't missed one, we're going strong, and we greatly appreciate everyone listening and tuning in. Hello everyone, I want to give you my quick recap for 2023 as to what I said I thought would happen and what actually did happen, and then give you my thoughts and predictions for 2024. All right, John. So now for the TN Mortgage podcast, uh, we're actually going to go through your predictions that you made this time last year and late 2022 when you were looking ahead to 2023. And I'm going to read these off the list and then you could give me your reaction if you think you were, of course, you were right on most of them, but how right, if there were any you were off or just what you thought. Um, Okay. Well, (laughs) now the proof is coming to a home to roost, basically. Yeah. Absolutely. We we have it uh, documented here. So we'll see if you were right or wrong. Well, the first one. Go for it. Uh, we're not starting off well with this. Spain will win the World Cup. And if not Spain, <laughs> then Brazil. <laughs> Did you read? Hold on. Well, hold on. Brazil, I have to say I have five fantastic Brazilians working with me. So that was that was done out of from my heart. The um the Spanish footballers winning the World Cup. Well, that was done with logic. I just they did win the World Cup. It was the ladies who won the World Cup, by the way. The Spain ladies won the World Cup this year. So I, I just got the wrong sex, but I got the right country. Yeah, but, um, that so counts. That still counts. I, I'm going to claim that one. For, but uh, no, yeah, that was a, God, that's 12 months ago. What an amazing. Isn't that crazy? We were talking uh, about that 12 months ago, huh? Yeah, uh, that was unbelievable World Cup. And um, I was delighted with the outcome. What a final that was, if yeah. you remember. All right. So moving on from the World Cup. The next thing that you predicted would be that interest rates would go up and keep going up in 2023. Unfortunately, Norm, I was right about that. Um, there was literally 12 months of consistent rate increases. Um, the, but the last meeting they had, they didn't. It was the first time in, in, in over a year they hadn't upped the interest rates. Um the expectation on that, this will follow on in terms of my predictions for 2024, is that rates will potentially come down next year, um, maybe as soon as June or July, but that's but they haven't taken rate increases off the table either, but the market expectation is that the rates will start to come back down. Well, it steadily rose throughout the whole of 2023. So I was on yeah. the money there. You were definitely on the money there. Um, This is an interesting one. You said with rates going up in theory, underlining in theory, that will affect buyer demand. Um, but you also notice that there's usually a lag, a six month lag in consumer behavior um, with interest rates when they're affected. So you thought maybe later in the year, later this year, there would be a de- demand would start to slow a little. It would affect demand. Here's my response to that. I would say I was maybe about, 90% accurate with that call. Um, and the reason I would say that is that the prices continue to go up. But now there's many different markets. There's a Dublin market, there's an outside Dublin market. So each market would have its own differing characteristics, shall we say. Like people, more people have been moving outside of Dublin. And that that price market has actually been going up while Dublin has been a little bit so- softer. Okay, but still much more expensive than outside of Dublin. So for the first six months, and this is what I thought would happen, prices were continuing to go up, but not with the same degree of, they weren't accelerating ahead. There wasn't the same manic buying that had been around during 2022, 21, coming back out of of sort of, even during COVID times, there was just mad bidding going on. So that level of, manic buyer behavior had had stopped shall we say but it i was still hearing clients telling me they were involved in bidding wars so yeah while it was it was it was less manic but there was still excess demand and that's pretty much what i said at the at the start coming predicting in 2023 that while interest rates would go up that would dampen demand it would dampen what the banks were prepared to lend to people towards the end of of the year Basically, it was probably even getting more diminished in terms of the the panic buying, but mm-hmm. still 
out there. Banks were lending people less money, so they they couldn't go to the point where they would have where they would have wanted to go to, you know. So, um, mm-hmm. and there were people who were suddenly going, well, hold on, rates are going up. I thought I was going to buy where I was going to be paying X. Now I'm buying and it's X plus fifty percent or whatever the figure may be. And they went, no, hold on, I'm not going to buy, right? And so there was there was you would have had a lot of people buying properties in the past because buying a property was cheaper than what they were renting. So the percentage of people who were only just doing it for that reason, when it was actually more expensive mm. to pay a mortgage than rent, then they went, hold on, we'll continue to rent. So there was mm-hmm. a little bit of demand was taken out of the market on that basis. Even though interest rates were going up. So in theory, that would affect demand. You noted that there were other factors that would actually um, increase demand. And that was banks lending more money and the gap between supply and demand. You thought those things would push the gap okay. between, and specifically the gap between supply and demand would actually push, keep prices up, at least not falling, um, okay. maybe well, cooling a little, maybe stabilizing, but not going crazy. Well, in relation to that, I was, again, I'm going to call myself at 90% correct, right? Um, at the back end of last year, the central bank came out with their banks could now lend four times income, right? Everyone took that as a as a de facto, that that's what the banks were going to do, okay? The banks then still brought their own lending rules behind that, okay? So it wasn't a absolute you're going to get four times your income. If you had, sorry, this is just to give, sort of, sort of give some content. The perfect people for the banks would be people who could borrow for 35 years, who don't have any children and who don't have any loans. They will get four times their income mm-hmm. every day, every week, every year, okay? But people who had loans, so they might be paying 500 on a car loan, people who maybe had two children, people who were, were 40, the banks weren't automatically giving. So I had to break some bad news to people who, who were kind of, were being fed, mis, not misinformation, but were, were seeing a figure and were coming up with the wrong answer on the on the back of it so while the banks had permission from the central bank they still took some prudent lending decisions based on other factors than just income they took age they took um loans they took number of children so it wasn't as um as clear cut that they would get more times it wasn't here you, everyone gets absolutely yeah, yeah. and you yeah. remember you may remember norm pre to 2023 one of the questions that people would always ask me and was always about, can we get an exception? If you remember those, exceptions those days were where massive, the yeah. section where exceptions were the kind of people looking to get more than three and a half times their income. Well, in 99% of the cases, banks have taken exceptions off the table, right? They're, they are out there in theory, but because of what's happened with the interest rates, the, there's been maybe one where maybe 10 in 100 might have got an exception. You're looking at maybe 0.1 in 100 would get an exception now because of what's actually happened with the interest rates in the last year. So that has had a, an impact on the demand hasn't run as much ahead of itself as I thought it would. However, the overriding point that I had made at the back end of that last year that I didn't think the prices would fall was, ba- was based on simply the demand was still there was still such a huge gap between supply and demand and ultimately if the if the, the supply can't increase overnight okay if the demand slightly gap the prices aren't going to fall because yeah. there's still there's still that gap there and that's pretty much what has transpired you yeah know? absolutely i think you you going down the list you nailed them um, pretty well 90 percent to 100 percent on most of them and of course the Spanish ladies won the World Cup on their side, so we'll we'll say that's a uh, that's we'll a take draw. that as a win, Norm. Yeah, take okay. that as a win. We'll What's take all the wins we can statistics? get. Right? It's how you spin the story, yeah. Um, and and here's another one you had. 2023 would be a good year. So how did that turn out? Well, yeah, I think it's been a very good year. Did I actually? It's what I I believe every year is a good year. You 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 get what you put into life, basically. You know, so. Um, Every year has its challenges, um, and there's no two ways about that. Um, the world of AI, and we we discussed this in one of our podcasts with the world, like that has just exploded in yeah. terms of, um, well, a business. How can you make your business more efficient? How so? From that point of view, from a from a business point of view, it's been a good year in terms of what I've been doing around my systems to help deliver a better um, journey for the customer. Um, from a 
personal point of view, well, um, yeah, no, I've had a, I've had a good year. Um, All right, John. Yeah, thanks for recapping those 2023 predictions. And now we're going to move into predictions for 2024. And so I'm sure you have, you looked into your crystal ball. You have a whole list of interesting things to tell us, many of them controversial. And so uh, <laughs> what, what, what will we be looking at in 2024? Okay. Well, obviously the focus of this um, conversation is around the property market. So let's, that's where we should, we'll start. Um, the, I will make my controversial picks later on. Um, but in relation to um, the mortgage market, if as predicted, um, the interest rates start to come down next year, okay? And for me, that's a very big if, okay? Even though the so-called experts are predicting it, for years, these experts were predicting the rates were going to go up. And that didn't happen for many, many years. Um so my thoughts on that would be, I'm going to give two scenarios here. I'm going to give a scenario if the rates are to come down, and I'm going to give a scenario. So maybe I'm covering my bets here a little bit, but um, this is something that I, I can't. Pre- I'd be more le- leaning on the side that the rates won't come down as quickly as people would want, given there's still a lot of uncertainty in the world. We still have the war going on in the Ukraine, and um, we still then have the Middle East situation. I'm not an expert. I'm not any, so, but I don't. I don't fully understand the implications of if that continues to escalate, what impact that will have on on the world. But it won't be good. Would be my would be my um my view. And as far as the interest rate, just that one particular segment is is, is all revolved around inflation. So if inflation doesn't come down as quickly as they're predicting then rates will not come down. That's the kind of, if you want to kind of give it, find a crude way of of looking at this, right? So what are the implications of the Middle East on inflation? And I don't know the answer, but I wouldn't be as absolutely convinced that it wouldn't have some impact. Um, so that being the case, I'd be more leaning towards rates not coming down as quickly as people would like. So if that is the case, my prediction would be very much along the lines of um, depending on what part of Ireland people are buying, I'm going to give, I'm going to subdivide my prediction. Okay. Um, Dublin will definitely will show probably zero or very little price increase. If the interest rates don't come down, I think we've reached the point whereby Dublin prices are too expensive for the amount of money that people are looking to borrow. Um, and if banks can't lend more money based on the interest rates, well, the people don't have any more money to to go. What's happening with these people then is that they're actually looking outside Dublin. And with the same amount of money the banks will give them, they're now moving to sort of 20, 30 miles outside of Dublin. Those areas are experiencing greater demand and the price, those prices are actually going up. And I would see that trend continuing so if you looked at the property market in general, you might think, oh, prices are probably are remaining the same. You kind of need to delve deeper. You kind of need to look at where are you looking at buying? So my prediction would be as follows. If rates remain the same, Dublin will probably flatline it for next year. Okay. If I was to make a call, which way I still would say the gap between supply and demand is um, big enough for there still to be some, because I'm still experiencing some um bidding wars going on but outside dublin if there, i would consider people would be moving away from dublin to the outskirts and i would see the prices there going up more than going up in dublin now if if rates start to come down all bets are off here by the way okay because we've still got a a gap between supply and demand that ch- that might change suddenly the people who are now moving outside of dublin if they if the rates start to come back down, they may feel they can buy in Dublin. Okay, so I might flip my prediction a little bit on that basis, whereby I would say that if that happens, you're going to have Dublin will would go up, right? Probably three or four percent, and the the increase in what's happening outside of Dublin wouldn't be as dramatic because some of the d- demand would shift back to Dublin. You know, so I probably covered all bases there. But um, 
my my per, if I if you were to na- ask me to nail it, I don't think rates will go down as quickly as we would hope. And I really hope I'm wrong with this, by the way, because I'm hoping rates will come down and people it's going to be cheaper for people to buy houses. But there's my call. I'm standing by that right now. Hey. Yeah, I don't I think you're pretty spot on in both cases because it pays to be contrarian a little bit these days. And you're right, we're economists, you know, Nobel Prize winning, um, you know, economists and researchers, and they don't know what the hell's going on in the world. And there's so many moving parts that affect each other that, you know, the narrative is, okay, now inflation is coming down, rates are high, it only has one place to go, but you never know. And like you said, there's a lot of X factors in the Middle East and other things. So um, how about um, competition in banking in the mortgage market in Ireland? Brilliant. And yeah. Additional, and then also your favorite chestnut uh, bank service. Um, well, in relation to competition, there is going to be increased competition, which is which is great for the consumer because it definitely, um, how should I describe it? Well, the more choice they have, the mess they're they're relying on um, the bigger um kind of the main bank shall we say there has been one new bank that's just about to launch um there's talk of two more um landing next year my prediction for those banks though right is they're going to they're, they're going to come in and they're going to look for a, a, a small market share they're not going to so they're going to become i would see them coming as niche players okay the reason for the reason I say this, and I've had conversations with people at the high level of these new banks, is that they still may not be able to compete with the big banks in Ireland, the Bank of Ireland, the AIB, the Prem TSP, on rates, because they're having to buy their money from the the bond markets, okay? But the banks, the pillar banks, have their own um, they have their own deposit bank, their, their deposit book, so they can, so they're able to get money cheaper, so they're able to lend money cheaper. So these, while these banks are coming, will come in, I would see them being more niche players rather than servicing the whole population. So, yes, it'll bring a little bit more competition, but I don't think it's going to sort of explode in terms of the the main banks having to react to them in any massive way. Um, so that will be they they'd be my thoughts on that. It's it's obviously really really good news. Um, if these come in and they they help people, where I think they will add, they may be from the conversations, unofficial conversations I'm having with these people in the background. They're saying that they may not be as particular as the main banks around certain things. Like at the moment, when we're putting an application into the bank, we need to be able to prove to the bank for the based on the last six months' behavior that the. The, the people could actually prove to the bank they could meet this mortgage repayment. I think the new banks may take a little bit more of a lenient view on this on the basis that, well, the mortgage is a 30-year, 25-year commitment. Yes, you could twenty, you could eat bread and water for six months and you could prove to the bank. But in real terms, if you're earning X, you should be able to, to pay Y, right? And people adjust their behaviors when they ultimately um, take um, a mortgage on board. That being said, so they may get a little bit of market share on that basis. And I'm sure they'll have other little niches that they will kind of go, okay, we're looking for X percentage of the market. How do the main banks not deliver that? Or how, where where's our advantage? And that's where they'll go after, you know? Mm, interesting. And, and what about your favorite uh, bank service? This should be a big rant, huh? <laughs> um, well, not to, uh, I, uh, these are my paymasters to a point. Um, and ultimately... But at the same time, I'm on the side of my um my clients all the time. So I'm, I will continually beat this drum um with regard to service. It's certainly some of the banks have have got better. We're we're now back to quicker turnaround des- decisions decision times. Um, not all of them have. Um, I they are all looking at the the space of. AI and using API between different systems, between broker systems and directly into banking system. So one bank was saying, oh, the last quarter in this year, but that's obviously clearly been pushed out to the first quarter of next year, which probably in reality means by summer of next year. So I do believe like 
I, my, one of my biggest rants is some of the banks from my clients, they still have to print, they still have to post statements out. They can't get statements online. It drives me absolutely scatty. And then a client would ring looking for a bank statement. And yeah, yeah, that's in the post, right? <laughs> Clearly doesn't come. We have to ring again. Now, there is a there is a thing called open banking that banks are looking at whereby clients can potentially give someone like myself permission to download the banks and that could be integrated. Not all the banks have signed up to it. So it is something that's, that's close, but I'm not sure how close it is. Um, so I still think we're going, we have, the banks are still going to be lagging around, lagging behind the service they should be giving next year, but they are moving in the right direction would be the, would be the message I would give probably just not as quickly as I would like. Mm, interesting. Yeah, definitely not as quickly. And, <clears throat> and also um, for your predictions for 2024, um, any general predictions in life, Here, the world, well, uh, the here's sports? In the, here's, here's in the in the world, and this I don't want to make this prediction, but I think, and this will be subject probably close to your own, closer to your own heart. I think Trump will be reelected um, next year. That's a call. I will hope it will be happily, and I'll say this openly. I hope I'm wrong, um, but that would be. I just don't know. I can't understand <laughs> a system. <laughs> where he's actually still allowed potentially to run. It's just, it's mind blowing, right? That, and I'm, I'd be quite passionate. Where, where I'll, I'll add to that a system where he's potentially allowed to leave the house and uh, act as a functioning adult every day is, uh, <laughs> should be in question, not just uh, run the country. Oh my yeah. God, that's going to be a, a shit show. Oh my God. I think yeah. you're right. And woo. <laughs> I wouldn't even edit that shit show words out of this. Thing. No, that's actually very <laughs> gentle compared when you're talking about Trump. You know, yeah, no, it's it, it's it, it's bizarre. So that would be my first one. Yeah. Would be my world pre <clears throat> prediction. Um, one I that I truly hope I get I I get wrong. Me um, and you both, yeah. The where, where, what else is weird is happening in the world. Well, I'm hoping there's. We, I'm, I'm hoping for a normal year next year. This was quite a normal year, um, in 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 life. So, more of the same, to be brutally honest with you, um, would be the, would be the, would be the view, you know. Um, Absolutely. How about sports? Any big bold predictions in sports? Students okay. in in sport, um, will be. I think there's the, the European Championships, right? As so soccer, um, I think I got a whole fire making um a prediction on that. Right now, I'll happily make a call on that prior to the, the tournament. I'm when I align myself with the um, relevant information at that point in time. As it stands, and this is the same before every single major tournament, England quite fancy their chances, right? So, yeah. Um, and every single time, I think is this the year they're going to do it? Um, the last time in the European Championship, they were beaten by Italy on penalties. Um, when it was actually held in England, and then their fans destroyed the stadium thereafter. Um, but yeah, in terms of sporting predictions, you know I'm a big Novak Djokovic fan. I think next year will be his his last year. Um, I think he's managed to beat all newcomers, incomers, but ultimately there's one there's one challenge you can't beat, and that's Father Time. And he's undefeated, <laughs> undefeated, yeah, <laughs> undefeated. So he turns thirty-seven next year. So my instinct is that I hope I, I'm hope I'm wrong on this one too because I'm a big fan. That next year could be his last kind of um year. I think and that Nadal is coming back as well, so that will be interesting. I'm a big tennis fan, as you know. Yeah, yeah, you love it. Yeah. And from a soccer point of view, my team is Man United, which I hate admitting because well, right, right now <laughs> they are not um at the at the races. So. Um, from a Gaelic football point of view, something that, that I think um, Dublin obviously are my team, and we won the All Ireland this year. So hopefully, and beat my beat Kerry, which is always a, brings special joy to my life. Um, more of the same on that would be great, but I don't want to get too greedy. Um, so that yeah, they'd be my sporting predictions yeah. for two thousand. And how about any personal predictions? Will John Coleman be getting married this year, walking down Ooh. the aisle? <laughs> maybe some, maybe a kid or two or something. What do you think? <laughs> We'll we'll keep that one under my chest. I, I like to. Ha I don't. I, I don't want to reveal everything to the world. Um, so 
I, I, I will mention this milestone, though. Um, and I think I mentioned, we, I might have told you this previously up there. This was the year, I 20 years ago, I stopped drinking based on having read Alan Carr's book. So I have no problem being quite proud about that achievement. Yeah, you know? incredible. Yeah. So definitely, I predict more of that, more health, happiness, and and a lot yeah, of... Well, I, uh, I, I'll give you a laugh. I did, I just ordered one of these um, cross trainers for the house. So in theory, this I, I, I'm very competitive and I play a lot of squash and I'm trying to keep beating these guys 20 years younger than me. So... While it, technically I might be better than fitness wise, it's it's always a challenge. So I'm trying yeah. to keep myself that little step ahead of them to to feed my my male ego when it comes to sport. You know, I love it. I love it. Well, I think 2024 will be a year uh, health, happiness, and helping a lot of people who are looking to buy a home in Ireland and helping a lot of people with their mortgage. So, like you said, more of the same. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening to the TN Mortgage and podcast for the end of 2023. Hoping you've all had a great year. Looking forward to catching up with you with my co-host and good friend Norm in 2024. Thanks, everyone, for listening, subscribing, and we'll see you in 2024.